of heaven is not you and me. Oh, the kingdom of God has set the captives free as we sing to you, Lord. Oh, he opens wide the door. Yes, we go through the gates. We never been. Just one touch of the king changes everything. As our praises go up, oh, his glory comes down. There's a shift on the earth as we release the sound. Let the song. Different than the regular songs, you know. Wow. Well, yeah. 
Once uh, I was cutting onions about three days ago on the counter. And, and I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a reason to cry. And, um, and this song just got downloaded. <laughs> so Isaiah, uh, whatever, this, the conference of 62. And the song just came. And, and I felt this was supposed to be for this conference. Or this meeting. I don't know if you call a meeting conference or this gathering. The fig leaf uh, gathering. The fig leaf burning. <laughs> That's what I got this morning. So sort of throw these new songs at you, but there, someone said a new song breaks, in, uh, brings, breaks old cycles, right? Yeah. And so we're into breaking the old and coming into the new, right? For the Lord will take delight in you. For the Lord will marry your land. As a young man buries a virgin, as a bridegroom sings over his bride. Nations see you lift up Zion and the glory with her crown. You shall be called Hezabah and your land be the light. Dancing in the streets, he will not forsake you. You're the jewel of his reward. I have posted watchmen on your wall. pursues us and actually in Hebrew Elohi Yashi means you're the God or the Lord of our salvation Amen. and I felt the Lord say in the beginning of 2019 it's all about 
the Lord is salvation. It's like people coming to the Lord. And there's just droves and droves of this harvest that is starting to, that, that's our year. This is our year for souls to come into the kingdom. So amen and bless you guys. Amen. Yes, it's all about onions. It's the onion. It's the onion victory. Amen. Uh, yes. Amen. Wow. So um, what I want to do is I want to reintroduce the team just in case there's someone here that wasn't here last night and uh, you don't know who we are. That's okay. You, you'll get over it. Um, so I want to introduce this is Glennis Gogles, and uh, she is actually the, um, the prayer coordinator for my national outreach team. So I really appreciate her. She's on the money. Even if she's not with us, she's constantly checking in, and we're so they are. Where are you from? Regina. Have you guys heard of that place? So, yeah. You went into. You went into different schools together. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah, yeah, right on. I bet you she cuts onions. Yeah, amen, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's Shelly Rogers. She, um, Shelly is my assistant, and she works with me on, and we've been way up north. We've been all over Canada, and hopefully we'll still be going, like the Energizer, Energizer Bunny. And so, and she's uh, from Craig, that big city over there. And uh, so, yeah, she works alongside, and it's a blessing to have her because I don't have, you see, the problem is I was never gifted with arithmetic. And so whenever I travel, if I was doing, well, Danielle knows. She, I remember doing a conference once. I took up the offering, and I did the expenses, hotels, everything. It wasn't good. No. <laughs> so I finally got so totally frustrated, I brought all the receipts home to my husband, and I said, please sort this out. Because I added it up six times and yeah. came up with si six different results every time. So it's not my gift. It's, it's so I know that I need someone that is gifted at helping me, and, uh, it, and it's, it's important for us to discover what are we gifted with and what are we not gifted yeah. with and realize that it's okay to be different. It's okay that I can't add. <laughs> it's okay that I can't multiply. It's okay. You know? So, and so it's Shelley... It's greater when you have a, a prophetic or apostolic administrator. Amen. And she's a prophetic apostolic administrator that travels with me. Actually, she does speaking on her own. She's speaking in um, Yorkton next month. So um, and then who else do we have? Oh, yeah, this, this one here. <laughs> <laughs> this is Marilee and Marilee Mutcher. She is from Carmen, Manitoba. And she works on our national team as the generations coordinator. But she's also a, a huge facilitator that helps teach and instruct and set up, and she's going to talk to you in a second here. Okay, and um, Danielle is the national president of a GLOW across Canada. She's the big fromage. That's what they call me, big cheese. The big cheese. She's a big fromage, okay? And that's her nickname. So, every, and we have national team meetings. Where's the fromage? You know, so we're waiting for her to show up. And so over here, we have uh, Jean Denauer, and she is from Saskatoon, and she is an area team leader that is in charge of leadership development in Saskatchewan. And so she's the boots on the ground girl, and she's our contact there. And Julie is with her, and she's from the lighthouse in Saskatoon, right? That's right. Amen. And so anyway, and Jean hails from uh, Saskatoon as well. That's that other little city over there. So, and who are you? Yeah. you and who am I? Yeah. I am. My name's Darlene Smith, and I am the national outreach coordinator for Glow. I'm also a pastor in a church, although I don't do pastoring very well. So get over it, okay? <laughs> but I am a um, apostolic leader in the region down there, 
And I also work with other ministries as well. I'm going to Uganda next month and speaking to uh, some women over there and doing a conference. And I've been to Nicaragua, Panama, a few, few places. So anyway, um, that's what I do. And uh, Mary Lee, I want to turn it over to you. I get the mic. <laughs> I want to start a little bit by just sharing that this identity message, I'd like to call it the transformation message yeah. because it's transformed me. I am not the person I used to be. I love my life. Seriously, you guys, it's different when you really get it, when you really get it. And so my joy has been to get to teach it to everyone. And we've been doing Zoom, what we call Zoom calls. They're video chats, you know, video calls where we get to see people. We can talk to them all over Canada. Uh, we've had people, well, right now we're doing a, a teaching with Newfoundland. Some people we met when we went there. We're doing Alberta team. And, you know, over the time, uh, we, we've not only done that teaching, but we've developed further teaching than what we started with to take you deeper for those who have already got the basics you know and you want to learn more so uh, when when we first started Dara and I actually were on the provincial team and we first started teaching the, the whole identity message who you are as a new creation it's different you're brand new there's something brand new about you and so he was unveiling that to us, and we were teaching it our way and going to our local groups. Well, we weren't the only ones getting that message at the time. Like Bill Johnson in Redding, California, they teach it. I had a book from Dutch Sheets, a book on identity. Uh, Jim Richards, I don't know how many of you know him. Same thing. The identity message was coming up everywhere. It's the revelation of God for this season to transform you so you can become who you were always called to be to do what you were always called to do. And you know, it's really fun to get to be who you're called to be and do what you're called to do. And I just love that I get to do this. So what our tool is that we're using, we have some booklets. Uh, this is Game Changers, and it's the one we usually start with, but we also have one that uh, is called Life Changers. And that's one we would follow it with. Now, we have some booklets here, and you can take it, and I guess you can learn it on your own, but we would certainly recommend you take it with a group uh, or from somebody who's already taken it. Like Jean here, I'm, I mean, you've been teaching group after group after group, have you not, Jean? Yeah, there. And, and it's just whoever God calls, whoever, you know, wants to be who they're called to be. And this, this is what we're using in a glow. So if you want to be part of that, you can take yourself a book uh, or bu buy a book They're for sale. But if you also want to be part of something, a bigger group or a group within a glow, you can contact us at the national team or maybe Jean Don Hour here. And we would put you on a call with other people so you can take it with others. And then we, if you get that through and we, because it, it's not just a teaching, it's a lifestyle change. And what we found is that we taught it too fast. People just saw it as head knowledge. I was really afraid people would see it as head knowledge because it had so transformed me. And I thought, well, I don't want them to miss out on how amazing it is to make your life different. And so I would encourage if you're doing it in a group on your own, take it slow. Like talk about it, discuss it. Um, you have to work it into your daily living. <laughs> because what, I have, what he first told me when I was learning about this was that whole Romans 12 verse 2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I read all kinds of books on the mind, so I understood how the mind worked. And if I can give you one tip that will help you a whole lot, you have to watch and listen and pay attention to what's going on up there. I mean, seriously, this is going to make a huge difference. Because we, we kind of go on autopilot. 
We don't take our thoughts captive. We don't pay attention to what we're doing. We're in negativity. We're in frustration. That's all going on up here. Well, the more you allow that, the more that affects your body, the more that affects your atmosphere. So one key, you can start that right now. Don't want negativity? Well, start listening. What, what are you hearing that's negative? Do you want it? You can stop it. You don't have to have it. And do you know that negative thought releases negative chemicals, which makes you sick? So there's so much to learn in this message. And so I really hope you all want to learn it. But uh, anyway, that's all I'm up here to tell you is that I guess they're back there. No? What do you want me to say about Jean? You're pointing to Jean. We Yeah, they are at the back, and I think they are $25, and I think there's DVD and CD as well, right? What it is, it's a total transcript from Graham Cook when he called the leadership of a glue in the United States. He thought, okay, who are the leaders God is raising up right now? I want them all, and 250 people were invited, and they decide to invite five Canadian. So at the time, there was our team here, you know, that was small, so they invited us there, and it was kind of a, a project that they were launching by fate, See where, and it was a blueprint that God began to release that then Graham totally dedicated to a globe for us to use. And now it's been used in 170 nations of the world. So it's a blueprint. Remember when I said earlier, but we're prophesied that God's going to give us you know, a blueprint that's going to fit you know, everywhere. It's the blueprint. This is the blueprint. And there's also another book that comes with that. It's called Life Changer. I was saying to the girl earlier, it's like, you know, do you remember the old credit card? Ch -ch -ch Remember you used to do? Well, game changer is like that. Life changer is game changer, life changer. It kind of locks it in. It kind of, you learn who you are and all this, and you begin to understand and get the revelation. But with the life changer, it just kind of a secure it so that you maintain it. It's one thing to win a battle, but then to maintain the battle. So you learn to maintain the battle and strength no matter what you go through in this because we are not from this world, are we? We are pilgrim. We are from heaven. We are citizen of heaven and we live on earth, right? So we don't think like the world. We don't think, you know, and that's why sometimes it doesn't fit with our religious mindset that has exalted stuff against the knowledge of God because we're learning who we are. So in the church, we've been taught, oh, you cannot go watch a movie. You cannot play a game. You cannot play a card. I don't remember if you remember that, right? Because we're not of the world. Baloney, I play card, I play game, right? It's because we didn't know who we were, how God sees us from above. So the church is awakening to that. So that's a blueprint, amen? Now, Jane, would you come and share another little tool that God's giving? Yeah. Well, I want you to know that I'm no, no ordinary woman. Yeah. I'm a child of the Most High God, a daughter of the Most High God. Yeah. I've been called, I'm one of his chosen people anointed and, and uh, called to lead and mentor his people who want to grow in his image and likeness. In uh, 2013, I went down to a, a Nagol conference in Montreal, and that's when Game Changers, when uh, Graham Cook released Game Changers, just Game Changers at that time. And when I listened to him and listened to the, the people, I thought, I need that. I was the only one that went from Saskatoon, and I wasn't on the executive then, and I didn't know whether I should... Get the, if I was able to get the material, but I said, God, just keep one of the tape. Uh, I th I th at that time, I thought it was the tapes. Just give me one of the CDs, just one, God. Please save one for me. And I had my check, and I was able to get the tape. And then Maureen came and she said, you get the manual that goes with it. And I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. <laughs> I went home with all this stuff. It was so good. And uh, from there on, we went home and helped Saskatoon Aglow get into it and just kept going, just facilitating. Because at the back of the book, it teaches you how to facilitate. And that is so good because every one of us can do it if we love the Lord. And just, it teaches us how to align with the glow, how to walk in obedience. And uh, it has changed my life, our, our marriage. It's really changed our marriage. It's brought a softness in. We're tender to one another. And uh, some, uh, some of the things that, ha well, just, uh, let me see, about two weeks ago, we were gone to a funeral in Regina, and all Joe's relatives were there. And I heard him and his brother talking. And then all of a sudden, I heard Joe say, let's have another thought. 
And just like that, they were going a place that was negative and it didn't embarrass anybody. He just said, let's have another thought. And we're taught to do that in this when we find that our conversation or whatever isn't line, aligning with the word of God. Just have another thought. Just say it or have another thought quickly. Or we're taught that uh, our old man is dead. Just turn to one another and say, your old man is dead. Even right now, you're dead. You're dead. You're dead. We're alive in Christ. You're so dead. <laughs> really, really dead. <laughs> Uh, exactly. And just, uh, 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 this is so good. I haven't, it's with me all the time in these, uh, since 2013. And I just see the women growing and I'm hearing them say, other women saying to other women or men, you've changed. And so when they do the, the course, I tell them, don't tell anybody else you've changed. Let them tell you. And they're hearing it. And when we did Game Changers a while back, uh, one lady came, and then she was talking to some of her friends. One was for SGI, one was for Canada Post, and they don't come to, hadn't come to a globe, but they wanted, they were hungry. So they showed up at my door. I knew they were coming, but I didn't know who they were. They came, and they just got into Game Changers, and it just changed their lives. And, and we began relationship in a way we wouldn't have any other way, because it isn't a Bible study. And we had a, a couple come, and he's a Bible teacher. And I said, oh good Lord, like a Bible teacher coming and I'm doing this. And it comes to the place where you list the things that you think are holding you back from where God wants you to go and you replace it with a scripture. It's awesome, that exercise. Well, the wife looked over at the husband when he brought his assignment back and she looks over and she goes, 32? She says, you don't have 32 things that could be holding you back. He said, I did. When I sat and just went through just little things that we take for granted, because the, it teaches us how to eradicate negativity from our life. And we don't realize sometimes how the world has crept into us, how the world has crept into the church, and we think it's normal, and it's not. And he just totally set free. And this last time I had a lady come, and I didn't know she didn't know the Lord, because she was asking people how, she was going to church, but she says, how can, where can I go so I can learn about Jesus? I want to learn about Jesus. So her friend sent her to me, and uh, this was the first time she was doing, doing the course. And as we got in, I realized she didn't know the Lord. So at coffee break, she started asking questions and asking questions about the Holy Spirit. Well, by the time the coffee break was over, she was born again and spirit-filled. And she has not looked back. And she was in the process of divorce. And today, right now, she's in Mexico with her husband. And they're resolving things because she, she didn't look at things wrong with her husband. She looked at herself and how she could change, and how she could mend. And they, they live right beside a, a rental place, and she said the rental place was just, had dogs, dogs all over the yard, dog poo all over, against their fence, just all over. And they'd ask her to clean it up, and, and uh, uh, Lynn said she would just get upset and angry, like, what's the matter with this woman? And then one day the Lord said to her, you know, uh, everybody's talked down to her. Nobody's talked up to her. So just show her that you respect her. So what did the Lord have them do? He had them, her and her husband go over and clean up the yard and haul and pay for everything out to the garbage dump. And the love just oozing from her heart. And she's still working with it, but she said, uh, her personality, she said, since I've taken this, I'm just turned just totally around. I'm thinking totally different. Uh, seeing people as Jesus sees them. Not seeing them as I saw them, but seeing them as Jesus sees them. And the relationship, so uh, she's expecting pretty soon the Lord's, the neighbor's going to say to her, like, why are you doing this? And she can share Jesus and bring her into the kingdom of God. So it's, it's just outstanding. And um, we were praying, the area team has been praying for humble. The Lord gave us 10 cities to come in and, and get game changes into. And Kindersley was one of one of them on our radar for the last couple of years, just to, and I asked somebody, do you have a connection? And then this come up and we thought, man, when you bring a connection, you bring a good one. And so we, we, ha we I think we have about six others, one that we need to connect, North Battleford, they're working on a group there. And just so you know that, I'm, we're just looking for a place, even where we can meet with three, four people to start, because that's all it takes. You know what, game changers, life changers, one group births another. I just finished Game Changers and Life Changers with, with two different groups. And a lady comes and she says, when are you doing the next Game Changers? I changed. I changed so much. I'm not the same. And I have a group that want to take it. When are you 
doing it again. And I said, well, just give me a little space to get my breath, and then we'll start again. And so we're, we're willing, I'm willing either by phone or to come out and help somebody, to work with somebody. When new groups start, we just, even if you have two, three people, the groups I have, a lot of them are four, and you can really get intimate. I haven't gone to the Zoom calls yet because I've been so busy just doing uh, one-on-ones, just face-to-face, -face, eh? and I love it. I just love it. God, the Lord has given us these little cards. They're little, they almost look like little decks of cards. Instead of the game cards, these are cards. And uh, some of the, this one here is Lord You Said cards. And it's to pick out of the card and read a couple every day. We have them on our table. Pick them out and read them. At Christmas time, I put them in all the Christmas stockings. Just whatever you want to do in a card. And it said, Lord, you said, as I wait upon you, you will cause me to rise up with wings as eagles. I will run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Amen. And they don't have the scripture on here because Kathy Saunders from International said, you can look it up yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, you said, you have given me a voice that releases healing. Lord, you said, all thing, in all things I am more than a conqueror through your love. That's the ones for the Lord said. And then we have another whole one, group of ones that said, grace overwhelms me. It overwhelms everything in us. In its path, it covers a multitude of sin and it cannot be separated from love. Now, the grace teaching in Life Changes is a second to none it's outstanding the grace teaching and what grace is and the other thing that is really exceptional in game changes is the fruit of the spirit yes. i love that teaching and how to allocate uh the fruit of the spirit i think some of the girls were on the call when one of the ladies from down east said she got a call from south africa that her brother and sister-in-law were in the process of divorce and she learned about, about allocating the fruit of the spirit the love and she went over there a couple of months later and there was no sign of divorce at all. So it's powerful. Because it said against these there is no law. Grace cannot be separated from God's glory. And it just goes on and on. When we were at Weyburn and Estevan for an outreach, the president of the GLOW took these and read them out. And we, they just bought them up like that. And several people said they were told by their doctor to pick something. They, they needed peace. Take something and just read it. And and continue to confess it and continue to say it. And they said, this is just perfect. So they picked it up and were taking it into their homes to read with their families. It's very good stuff. Okay, it is. It's wonderful. Yes. Just a minute, I want to give you a box of this good stuff. Oh. Thank you. I received that. Lord, you said. I'll give you this. Okay. Well, Lord, you said, Lord, you said, Jean, go back to your seat and put them together. And I'll <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I just um, wanted to add that uh, I think it's a year and a half ago now, I'm not sure exactly, when Remy did a Zoom teaching with the elders and the deacons of the church here. And she took us through Game Changers. And it was a very profound experience for us. One thing that we realized is we were, there's so many, but one thing that many of us realized is, is we were looking at areas in the church and saying, Lord, you know, you keep, we keep teaching certain things. People are very faithful to keep committing to teach and to pray and to counsel and to do so much. And yet it seems like all we're seeing is behavioral modification where they will try their best, but then what's really in their heart is going to come out if they haven't been transformed. And that's what's happening with game changers. And even in our own leaders, we've been challenged by um, Apostle Remy to go back and do game changers and do it with church people that are interested in taking it. Because as we take part of it again, we grow more too. Amen? You know, nobody's arrived. Amen? One thing that I really appreciated in it was that they talk about, I mean, there's many things. She mentioned so many, so I'll just pick another different one. One other thing that was very good is speaking the language of heaven. Speaking what God says about us. That's why it was interesting when you said that, because that's what the Lord told me to just share here. Speaking what the Lord says about us. What we've heard in prophecy, what we've read in the word that just comes alive and it just bursts in your spirit. And then you get consumed with the day-to-day -day life and all of a sudden you realize you've lost that. 
You know, it's just waned because that has not been your focus. And so we need to come back to what is God saying. And even this afternoon, they were talking about prophetic words and, and sharing. If you haven't got, if you haven't received a prophetic word, we really want you to get one today. Because we need to agree with what the Lord says about us. And remember that the word of prophecy is we're judged by what he's already planted in our heart. It confirms to us what we know deep in our heart. We just need it to be affirmed again, that it comes alive. And that word just bubbles up within us. And we can hang on to it. And that can be our anchor. Amen? So what I would love to see is game changers in the congregation here. For By many or by few, I don't care. But I know God has already put on the heart of some to get a group together or even do it a Zoom thing again or... You know, maybe you're going to do one, Gene, and people can connect if there isn't that many. But it is well worth it. And yes, the books are the transcripts of what is being taught. And there's homework in the bottom. And, you know, it was kind of interesting for us as leaders to turn all our homework into Remy <laughs> and have her look at it all and say, okay, that's what you're dealing with, you know, and whatever. But it's, it's so good. It's so good to be accountable. Yeah. It's so good. There isn't. There's no right or wrong. It's, it's where we are and where we're going, yeah. right? We're just, it's, it's just a good thing. So I really want to encourage people to um, talk to Jean or, you know, we can communicate too if there's a few here that want to do something here. But we are more than willing to have game changers here. In fact, we are beyond and um, above and beyond willing. It's, it can happen. Amen? <laughs> you know, and it's, it's interesting too because I was... Um, on a journey where I had so much inner healing. I had been through almost, I taught inner healing. And I, I taught so much of that. I, I went through so much inner healing. And it was the process. Like, I'll give you an example. I was dealing with huge rejection. Okay, I was called... As, a, as an apostolic leader, a pastor, or whatever you want to call it. and But I'm telling you, I was disqualified because I was a woman. Okay? I went through that whole gamut, and I was... Oh, oh, yeah, divorce. That was really bad. Anyway, um, all the rest of this stuff, I was dealing with this, and it was like I could never measure up. I, it was like a constant nagging in the back of my head. And I can remember one day the Lord just, you know, I, I found out his heart for me, for me. I just kept saying, God, I know I have a call. I mean, I even went to bridal college. Yeah, yeah you know, you send your kids to Bible school so they can get married. Well, I went to bridal college. And I went to Bible college. And, I, and, and, and then, of course, after that, I married a husband because we sang really well together. I learned not to sing with just anybody after that. Yeah, because it was like God, it was an expectation the church put on me. Oh, you sing so well together, you should be married. Well, we were like oil and water. He was a city guy, and I'm not city. Okay, I have my own boat. She does. Okay, I even back it into the water and launch it. Okay. And so I have that. And so, but he was deathly afraid of water. You know, it was like oil and water. But we sang good together. You know, and so anyway, with the story of this, this thing, it was like after about four and a half years, I realized this wasn't working. But because of the nature inside of me that loved God and wanted to please him so much, I was in torment. I was in absolute torment about it for years. Danielle came into my life around that time, and she prophesied that I had a call, and I thought she was wrong because I lost it. I was under such condemnation from the church, etc. And I can remember being um, 30,000 feet in the air. I was f flying home from Manitoba back out into uh, northern Ontario where I was working. And again, I went before the Lord, and I said, I'm so sorry I failed you. I'm so sorry I failed you. 
you know, because I, I really wanted to fulfill that call. And um, Danielle prophesied over me, and she, I could barely understand her in those days. She was so French. Hardly spoke English, yeah. And, uh, so, and she began to speak. The field is so full. It's so big. It's so full and so big. And I'm going, well, isn't that nice? <laughs> I didn't understand prophetic language one bit. And I'm going, what on earth is she talking about? So I got brave enough to ask her. And she said, it's your ministry. And I thought, well, that can't be. I, you know, I was called. But I got divorced. And so that condemnation that was coming on me, 30,000 feet in the air, I was returning home one time in the plane. And the Lord spoke to me very, very clearly. And again, I was going to him again. God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Failed you. I failed you. And uh, the Lord just liked that. I knew it was him. He shocked me. And he said, did I put you together? And I went, I actually went quiet. Well, that was a miracle right there. <laughs> it was, I went quiet and I had to ponder it. I thought, did God put me and him together? Or was it myself? Was it the church? That thought we sang so well together, we should be married. And I realized at that moment that he was not condemning me. And immediately, I realized I had been under this false crap. I said it. I'm sorry. I really apologize. Anyway, I'm under this false stuff. And so later on, you know, I still have things to deal with. I went through uh, inner healing. I went through, I taught it, all the rest of this stuff. And all the rest, and I remember being in torment for rejection. I felt if somebody looked at me the wrong way, they were thinking evil thoughts towards me. And I was under such heavy, heavy rejection. I was sick of it. I had every bit of prayer counseling, every bit of inner healing, everything, nothing was working. And then I began to listen about this renewing of the mind and be transformed by the renewing of your mind and the whole thing about as he is, so are you. As he is, so are you. And so I'd be walking down the road. I live out in the country. I'd be walking down the road. The cows were right there, okay? They were watching me <laughs> as I was walking by. Okay, so we... <laughs> So I was walking down the road, and I was in torment. I said, God, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of feeling rejected every time I turn around. I cannot deliver myself. And I remember just being so upset about it. God, set me free. I can't do it. I was tired of it. My friends were tired of it. Because every two minutes, it was, it was bothering them that I was being bothered. And so I... And, and, the Lord just started me on that journey, and the cows were watching. They saw a difference. Okay. And so I would be walking up and down that road, and he said, as he is, so am I. As he is, so am I. As he is. And I said, okay, God, you, you are faithful, so am I. You are loving, so am I. As he is, so am I. As he is, so am I. You see, I have found out that, that Jesus identifies with us so much, and he does not see us separate from him. Okay? And so here's, here's the scripture. Paul, Saul, one day was on his way to Damascus, and the voice from heaven comes out, and he gets knocked off his horse. And he's saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting the Christians? What? Why are you persecuting me? See, Jesus is identifying with us, and we're not even realizing it. Okay, and here's another scripture in Matthew. He's talking about don't, don't neglect the children because 
As much as you've done it unto the least of me, my brethren, you have done it unto me. The least of these, you've done it unto me. You see, we separate ourselves from Jesus, but he does not separate himself from us. Okay, because we see ourselves in a different way. So what that did is as I was walking up and down the road, he is holy. He's saying, you are holy. He's faithful. You are faithful. And what that did is it changed me. And now our son, uh, he was working in the oil fields in, in Alberta. And he got himself into drugs. He got himself into a lot of trouble. And um, one day my husband, he decided, I'm gonna, I have to go get him because he's actually living on the streets. And so Gary drove all the way to Edmonton from our place and picked Jay up. And then he phoned me and he says, Dar, I've got to bring him home. Um, he's got no place to go. And you see, prior to that, it was not good with Jay and I. Okay, and the reason is, is I was brought up where this, if you do this, don't do this. I was brought up that way, following rules. You know, and I was brought up where I was responsible. I had to make my bed in the morning, keep my room cleaned. Uh, you should see my desk now, it's not good. Anyway, but all this kind of stuff was, that's the way I was brought up. And so Jay is not my son, he's my husband's son. And so that caused uh, uh, a tension too. Because it felt like there was two Smiths in the home and a Barker. So there was a division there. And so what happened is, Gary brought Jay home. And when he brought Jason home, Gary said to him, Jay, do you see a difference in Dar? And he goes, whoa, yeah. Whoa. Why? The transformation that happened in my mind, as he is, so am I. It, it brought that rejection into peace. And so this is what Game Changers does. Game Changers helps us to see how Jesus sees us. Accepted. And so, yeah, it doesn't mean that I'm absolutely shining perfect and I behave right 100% of the time. No, I just said crap in church. <laughs> you know? No. But at the same time, I can start believing what he believes about me. Okay? He's not nervous. And so that's what the process of game changes. Now, every one of us have a different story of how it connected with us. Um, but that's how it connected with me. It was a real, real change. And the things that used to upset me, I don't care anymore. You know what? When people don't like women ministers, well, everybody has a right to be wrong. <laughs> yeah. You know? You know, whereas before, it would, it, you know, I was called Jezebel, I was called everything under the sun, you know, but I know what I'm called to do. And so anyway, this is what Game Changers does. It really does help. I would recommend you, you taking a course. And the one thing is, is the homework assignments are actually very good because it's, it's a how, how heaven sees you and it's actually, it helps you process it through. And um, so when people start thinking right, then we will start behaving right. Yeah. You see, it, it, it's, you can't change your, your thinking by changing your behavior. No, it's the other way around. It's the other way around. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so that's why it, it, it shifts. There's also a verse of scripture where it said in uh, Philippians, he says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And we always said, okay, let's just strive to get better now. Well, that's not what that verse means. What that verse actually means is to work on everything that salvation brought you. That's it. 
It brought you healing. It brought you deliverance. It brought you, you begin to work on those things. You walk on all the positive things. Work on those things. It's not working out the negative out of your life. It's working on the positive that came into your life. It's not anger management. Yeah. Amen? Okay, so what we're going to do this afternoon is um, we really want to stir the prophetic. We really want to stir that up. And, um, and so basically what we're going to do is we're going to do a lot of prophetic activation this afternoon. And I see those cards. Yes, Shandahanda Koshambaha. Cometh forthith. <laughs> How many believe in the King James? Oh, amen. Yes. And the, then you develop a lisp. <laughs> okay. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about a glow in our portfolio and an opportunity. Um, this is a global partner. Um, I used to be on a team with Jean, and um, our treasurer is pa was Patty Webb, and now she's the president. But she got this revelation about uh, global partners, and it had such oil on it for me that I'd like to tell you about it. Well, in a glow, we're um, in 171 nations, and there is, according to Wikipedia, there's 21,000 leaders in the nations. So a glow started out with four women at a table. And now, we used to be called Women's Aglow, but we're called Aglow International, is the one in uh, the U.S., is, which is over all the nations. But, of course, we're Aglow International Canada. Anyway, we have some things. It's like Costco. When you get a membership, you get some benefits. But you cannot shop at Costco without the membership. So... What it is, is any time that we partner with any ministry, you get what they have. So like the Benny Hinn or whatever you partner with. And so here's an opportunity to partner. It's $50 and it's once a year. But a glow carries an apostolic um, uh, evangel, evangel, help me with that word, evangelist. Thank you, evangelistic. Um, and we have a lot of things in our portfolio like... Um, God promised us that we're going to um, have a thread and, and unravel Islam. We pray for Israel, um, anti-sex trade. Um, there's many targets we pray uh, for nations and cities, capital cities. So there's like something for everybody. So the, the portfolio is unreal. Plus we're doing game changers. But God is using us to transform nations. But it's person by person and then it's the micro to the macro so we want to give you an opportunity if you'd like to be a partner it's fifty dollars and then you can just fill this out i'm going to give um these to glennis and if anybody would like one and now we have what we'd call a kingdom builder a kingdom builder is someone who wants to come and partner with canada and so into us monthly so if you feel like the holy spirit's doing this there's no pressure with this this is totally god's kingdom and so we just wanted to make this available because we have a great field and so if you feel like you want to be part of that we'd love to have you so if uh anybody would like one they can glennis can give you one and there will be some at the back table thanks Okay, so what I would like the Aglow team to come up, please. Okay. Yeah, if you have a phone um, and you, uh, you come up for prophecy, make sure you bring your phone with you, just in case you get a phone call from God. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, just in, so you can record what what uh, what is being said, okay? Jason, Jason, and Jackie, we need minstrels. Because you know, with the Elisha thing in the Old Testament, he called forth a minstrel. Shanda Okay. Yeah. Yes, dear. Oh no.
we're going to do is we're going to probably not live stream this part, okay? Because otherwise people will get bored and they'll fall asleep and fall in their cars or whatever. Like, we don't want that to happen. So, um, so um, yeah, and 